Waking up in prison is still a strange feeling. It wasn't that I woke up with anxiety or stress. It was the complete opposite. I woke up feeling a sense of calm and peace because I decided to accept my fate. Last night at 9 p.m. we were told by a CEO that it was stand-up count time. This is basically a routine that would happen every day while in prison. During the week, there would be stand-up count times at 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. and on weekends at 10 a.m., 4 p.m. and 9 p.m. During these times, you are required to stand by your room or bunk completely silent while the guards count the inmates to make sure everyone is where they are supposed to be. Making noise or interrupting this count can lead to serious consequences. The guards didn't fuck around when it came to count time. As I opened my eyes and looked around at my new home for the foreseeable future, the space was cold and made of concrete and blocks. I had slept better than I had in a long time, and even though my mattress was more like a bed made of metal, looking back, it was probably because the last few years were finally over. It was time to move forward and get my mind and body right. I was determined to leave this prison, stronger mentally and physically, than I was ever before I arrived. I quickly washed up and took a walk around the unit to familiarize myself to my new surroundings. Because I crashed out early the night before, I didn't hear the food delivery time to the unit, so I missed breakfast on this first day. I was told by the old man that breakfast arrived at 5.45 a.m. He handed me an extra banana he had. I thanked him and gladly accepted. It was time for me to meet a few people and get my routine in order so the next 21 days on lockdown quarantine would be more productive. At the time, there were only about 10 inmates in our part of the building. The building was separated in two areas, divided by a wall made of plexiglass and wood. The other side of the wall was for inmates that were quarantining before they are released, while our side was for inmates that were arriving to the camp. The wall barely touched the ceiling and it seemed to really serve no real purpose whatsoever. I went to the TV area and sat with the old man. Howard is what I will call him going forward. We talked about the night before and he explained that he did not sleep well at all. A part of me felt for him since I knew he was truly out of his element in so many ways. I met a few other guys, both from my area back home. One was in for credit card scams and another was a former podiatrist charged with Medicare fraud with 36 and 18 month sentences respectively. They both arrived the day before and we chatted up some small talk. Once again, we would remain friends throughout our journey. Killing time was tough that first day. The TVs were silent and in order to hear them, you needed to purchase a radio or MP3 player from commissary. We were told that it would be at least a week before we would be able to get any commissary shopping done. For those of you that don't know what commissary is, it's basically a general store that the prison runs so you can get items that you may need. From food to medicine to clothing and some small electronics. The list is extensive and it's one of the most important times for an inmate each week. It's the time where you could get some creature comforts and feel somewhat normal again. I walked around the unit and realized that there were hardly any books or games to pass the time. They did have a few games of chess and some decks of cards. I had always wanted to learn how to play chess. So I added that to my list of things I wanted to accomplish while in prison. Lunch came at 9.45 that morning. Getting used to lunch that early in the day was something to adjust to, but again, I just accepted what was and didn't gripe about it. We were served a burger that could only be described as a burnt hockey puck with some sliced carrots on the side and a small apple. I decided to set my lunch aside and went to my room to get ready for my first workout of this journey. I figured it was time to get started and no need to waste. I found an empty room and began my routine of push-ups, squats, and dips. I figured out some variations of the exercise using the bed and the bed frame so that helped mix things up a bit. I was out of shape, but I made it through knowing that I would only get stronger as the days went by. After the workout, I showered up. Because I didn't have any shower shoes yet, I scrubbed the floor thoroughly with a floor brush and some bleach I found. The last thing you want to do is shower without shoes, but I didn't have a choice. As one inmate said as he laughed, clean that floor as best as you can. The last thing you want to do is slip and fall on the floor and get pregnant. After a quick shower, I changed up and stopped by to see Howard. He was hanging out with the doc. Let's call him Dr. Toes going forward. 
I was asked to join them and we passed a few hours just talking about life and kept it light. We were all eager to make some calls and get some emails out to our family to let them know we are well and safe. But unfortunately, we would have to wait a few more days to get our PAC number. This number is needed to make calls, get emails, etc. After 4 p.m. count, dinner arrived around 4.30 and I ate half of it, saving the other half for later. The food wasn't that bad in prison. It consisted of some protein, two slices of wheat bread, beans, and a piece of fruit sometime. Every meal in prison had beans. I got used to them quickly as I knew they would be a nutritional staple in my life going forward. After talking with a few inmates in the evening, I retired back to my room and read some book I found in the game room. I really didn't care what it was. It was just something to relax to and again, pass the time. Finding a way to pass the time in prison is critical. Over the course of the next weeks and months, I mastered that through and through. After a few hours of reading, it was time for 9 p.m. stand-up count. A few inmates were talking through the process. I tried to get their attention to let them know that they needed to chill, but to no avail. The guard came around the corner and screamed at everyone to shut the fuck up. That got everyone's attention real quick. After count, I read for a little more, then rolled over staring at that same cinder block wall I did the night before, as my eyes eventually closed. Happy that I made the best of this shit show today and curious to see what tomorrow would bring.